I'm going to read from the book of Joshua chapter 1. I'll read from verse 6 to verse 9 while we are standing. Eh? Joshua chapter 1, I'll read from verse 6 to verse 9. The word of God says, Be strong and of good courage. These are instructions being given to Joshua. For to these people... You shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, indeed, we are humbled at your presence this morning. Jehovah, you've been a blessing to us from the time we walked into this sanctuary in the first service, in the second service, and behold, we stand in the third service to receive a word from you. Lord, I pray that you prepare this meal for your people. I pray, God, that you open our hearts to receive from the throne room of heaven. I pray, God, that you minister your spirit and breathe life in the word of God. Use me as a vessel, O oh God. I give you thanks and I give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Let me again take this opportunity to thank our Gio for listening to the Lord and for being in time and in season which such a good theme for this year, 2024. Our theme being advancing for conquest. Thank you, man of God, for listening to God. And also thank you for opening this theme up for us and creating a very good context that we are now flowing in as support pastors in this ministry. Again, to our resident pastor, picking up from there and being able to shape the context for us so powerfully last Sunday. Uh, we are just overwhelmed with the joy of the Lord as we stand to minister this morning. So God bless you all. Amen. Amen. The topic, the topic, say my topic. The topic for this sermon this morning or this afternoon is obedience factor in advancing. Buona sifiwe. The obedience factor in advancing, the obedience factor in advancing. I'm picking this theme, and I'm looking at the obedience factor in advancing. In the scripture that we've just read from Joshua 1, 6 to 9, we note that obedience follows instructions or commandments or commands or rules or regulations. You can only be obedient to rules, instructions, or commands. So the scripture we've read, which is from Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, that is articulated as instructions or commands being given to Joshua, being given to Joshua. But as a way of a recap, and going back to our theme scripture, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore... Joshua is being instructed here, arise, or being given instructions, to arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. The Lord starts by giving instructions to Joshua as captured in our theme scripture. Now a few highlights, just taking us back uh, to this origin of this theme as we began the year from our geo and also from our resident pastor, 
I'm going to focus a bit on some excerpts from chapter 1 all the way to chapter 10, but a quick reminder so that we can flow with this sermon today. In chap chapter 1 of Joshua, God is commissioning Joshua. So Joshua is being given instructions for what is ahead of him. We did come to understand that Joshua was an assistant to Moses. And the Geo gave a very good illustration of the kind of assistant that Joshua was. No wonder he was being told, do not be afraid and don't be dismayed. Because the task at hand for Joshua was huge. And being an assistant to Moses, he never expected or anticipated that he would be the one leading the Israelites at that time. So God gives him instruction after instruction. And actually, Moses, spending time with Joshua, was also giving him instructions. So we see in chapter 1, God commissioning Joshua following the death of Moses. Joshua has been appointed as a new leader of the Israelites. God is reassuring Joshua. And that's where we read the scripture that I've just read. In chapter 2, we are introduced to the spies, the two spies, the two men that Pastor Joyce told us about last Sunday. Singi and the Geo. Mlikuwa church. You remember those two men? Yeah. What Pastor Joyce didn't tell you is that there was a woman. <laughs> there was a woman. A woman called Isabella. <laughs> Rahab. There was a woman called Rahab. So these two spies, when they were sent by Joshua they went into the arms of Rahab, Isabella. <laughs> Rahab is noted to have been a harlot. But God chose her to secure these two spies. God chose her to fulfill the purpose for which Joshua had sent these two spies. So what I want to tell you this morning, no matter the kind of person you've been told you are. Or no matter the circumstances you find yourself that have defined who you are, the Lord can still use you. The Lord can still use you. The Lord used Rahab. But then these two, these two men were not that smart for information because when they walked in, Rahab already had the revelation of who they were. He already knew that God had done something big in the hands of the Israelites. He had already known, if you read chapter 2, you'll see, he had already known that God had used the Israelites to conquer on the east of Jordan. And so as they, as they are coming in, he, she is already aware of who these two spies are. And she had a plea for them. As you come, we know you are going to get victory. We know you are going to win. But as you win, remember my family. Remember me. And actually, just by that act, Rahab was saved. Together with her family. Do not underestimate yourself because of the conditions that you find yourself in, child of God. That is not the sermon, though. Chapter 3 of Joshua we are introduced to the crossing of the Jordan in chapter 3. Now, in the first service today, Pastor Joshua laid a very good foundation. I was just enjoying myself. Pastor Joseph, yes. Lay, Pastor Joshua, Pastor Joseph. <laughs> so I was just enjoying myself listening to him talk about the three Ps. And I'll encourage you to go back and check them out. The promises of God, the plan of God, and the presence of God that was in Joshua. I'm going to dwell a bit on the plan side because instructions that God was giving were captured in his plan and we were told in the morning the plan of God is found where? In the law of the Lord. In the word of, of God. The instructions and the commands are in the word of God. So if you, if when we came to the second service, Pastor Alan came and spoke about crossing over the Jordan. And again, it was very powerful when he, he taught us on faith 
basically on fear, overcoming fear and unbelief. And so a very good foundation laid for me. So as I come into this service, I feel the presence of the Lord is with us. And I believe God wants to teach us in this space of obedience as a factor in advancing. And so as you look at chapter 3, crossing of the Jordan, again, Joshua is given very specific instructions. So you'll start noticing that the entire story from Joshua chapter 1 is about instructions, Joshua obeying those instructions and gaining victory. It is about instructions, Joshua obeying those instructions and gaining victory or conquering. If I just take you back briefly in chapter 2, even those two spies were given instructions by Rahab. They were actually told where to go and hide, and they were told how to escape. Their success was pegged on their obedience to those instructions. If you read further, the same Rahab was also given instructions. And she was told, when we come, when you see us coming, do the following. Make sure those sheets have been lowered through the window. And make sure that your family are going to go down through that same window. She was only able to be saved because she followed those instructions. Because she obeyed. So if obedience is a critical factor in our advancement. So again, therefore, when they were crossing the Jordan, there were clear instructions that they should not start the journey until the Ark of the Covenant, being carried by the priest, goes ahead of them. So the priests were to lead the way. And so the obedience of the children of Israelites and Joshua is what caused God to continue to fulfill his promises for them. When they were crossing the Jordan, they were given instructions that you shall pick some stones. And when they had crossed, they were told, let the 12 tribes of Israel have the stones that you've picked from the Jordan placed at this place as a memorial that the Lord opened up the Jordan for us to cross through. Instructions. And as they followed those instructions, they were able to gain victory. As they obeyed the Lord, they were able to gain victory. In chapter 6, we were told, and last Sunday we got a very good exposition on the fall of the wall of Jericho. That's captured in chapter 6. Again, instructions were given. Six days, each day you'll go around the wall of Jericho. And on this one day, you will do it seven times. And until I give you instructions to, to shout, they only conquered because they followed the instructions. Because they were obedient to follow instructions. We come to encounter, I'm just fast tracking so that I can come to the main um, topic of the day. We come to encounter I, and of course in I we saw when they disobeyed what God had told them, what happened? They were defeated. But later on when they followed the instructions of God, they got victory. Yeah? If we look at chapter 9, again, you find that we meet these Gibeonites, eh? the guys who pretended to be from very far away, and people are crafty, I tell you. Yeah? They pretended to be neighbors, I mean, from very far away. And even how they walked, how they talked, I'm sure when the children of Israel look at the, you know the Gibeonites, go read chapter 9, you'll meet them. Yeah? They must have looked so frail. And these guys looked at them and they're like, you must have traveled a very long journey. The way you look frail and tired, you must have traveled a very long journey. But they had heard of the victory of the Israelites, and they were not willing to face them in battle. So they said, if you cannot beat them, join them. So they came to plead for a treaty so that they can be partners with the Israelites. So what happens here? Then most, I mean, Joshua comes to the realization, of course, from the Israelites, that these are actually our immediate neighbors. So they have lied to us that they've come a long way. Nevertheless, and remember because Joshua was walking with God, because he had the fear of God, and you'll notice in all those encounters, he never started without the presence of God. In fact, he instructed them to sanctify themselves because of what is ahead of them. But in this case of the Gibeonites, they didn't. But nevertheless, because of the faithfulness of the Lord and the faithfulness of Joshua, he said, we'll forgive 
ourselves for the sin that we've done here. However, they have committed to be our servants, so they will be our servants. So they will be our servants. So the Gibeonites became their servants. And that takes us to the five kings of the Amorites in chapter 10. And again, we see instructions. And we see how these kings then come to, to want to come against Gibeonites and therefore to fight the Israelites. But because of the word of God that was strong and present in Joshua, when he comes to know that these kings have conspired to come and fight the Israelites, again, he goes back to the place of God, the presence of God, and is able to mobilize, give instructions, and those instructions are followed. And something fundamental happens in that war. For the first time, supernatural, the supernatural happens. The sun is held at a standstill. Yeah, so I've taken you through a brief summary of those chapters so that I can come back and then we walk through the journey of Joshua. So therefore, we are introduced to the word obedience in chapter 1, as I said, um, when we read Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, which said, Be strong and of good courage, for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Instructions, commands, the law being given to Joshua. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right and to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. So the secret of Joshua's prosperity was in his obedience to the law of the Lord and living according to that law, meditating on it and not turning to the right or to the left. It says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So what does the word obedience mean? What does the word obedience mean? I looked out in the Oxford Dictionary. Actually, I did two dictionaries. I went to the Oxford Dictionary and I went to the Cambridge Dictionary so that I do not misunderstand this word. Oxford Dictionary meaning says, Dictionary, I mean, um, obedience is the action or practice of obeying. It is the action or practice of obeying or doing what one is bidden, what one is instructed to do, what one is bidden. The fact or quality of being obedient. So obedience is also the fact or quality of being obedient. It is the submission to the rule or authority of another. So when I say I'm obedient, it means I submit to the rule or to the authority of another person. The Cambridge Dictionary has a more simplified uh, meaning, illustration here. It says, obedience is the fact that people or animals do what they are told to do. So when you do what you are told to do, you are obedient. When you do what you are told to do, you are obedient obedient. Given time, we will look at the obedience factor in Joshua. That's, in fact, that's what we'll narrow in uh, in this sermon. However, I would say this is a series because out of this series, we can also talk about the obedient factor or the obedience factor in the two spies or the obedience factor in Rahab or the obedience factor in the Israelites. But today we will focus on the obedience factor in Joshua. The obedience factor in Joshua. So Joshua takes courage in verse 10 of chapter 1 of Joshua. In verse 10, after he has been given the instructions that we just read in, chapter, in verse 6 to verse 9. In verse 10, we see a Joshua who is now arising. A Joshua who is getting ready to Pastor Alan's words earlier. A Joshua who is now taking responsibility. A Joshua who's coming out of his comfort zone because he's already been instructed. He's, the Lord has told him, I am with you. Niwewe peke yako sasa, take charge. A Joshua who is realizing he is now the leader. And so in verse 10, we are encountered with this Joshua. He says, then Joshua commanded the officer of the people. I'm reading from first Joshua. I mean, from the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 10. He says, Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, pass through the camp and command the people, saying, prepare provisions for yourselves, 
For within how many days? Three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Does that sound like somebody who is in doubt about what is going to happen? Does it, does it sound like somebody who is unsure? Does it sound like somebody who is pretending? This is someone who is convicted. So Joshua has taken courage. So the words be strong and of good courage are now applying themselves in this context. He has taken responsibility. He basi dereva hayuko. Moses was the driver, he's out. Joshua is seated at the driver's seat and he's now ready to drive this bus. So he's giving instructions to the people of Israel. So he says, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God has promised you or given to you to possess. So Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 to 6 says, Then Joshua rose early. So I've just jumped fast forwarding to Joshua chapter 3, 1 to 6. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. I'm fast forwarding from verse 10 to chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. He says, And lodged there before they crossed over. Verse 2 says, so it was after three days, after the three days he had spoken about in chapter 1, verse 10. He says, after three days that the officers went to the camp and they commanded the people saying, so what are, this, what are they doing? They are responding in obedience to what Joshua had instructed them to, to do. They are responding in obedience. So he says, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits of measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. So Joshua acknowledges that the path they have taken is a path that they have not passed before. And therefore, they need the presence of the Lord to go ahead of them. And therefore, they, the people needed to obey what Joshua was instructing them to do. Verse 5 says, and Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priest saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Joshua is demonstrating obedience in the Lord in ensuring that the presence of God goes ahead of him, as was the case with Moses. If you remember when Moses was first being given the mantle to go to Egypt and set the people of God free, Moses cried out to God and said, unless your presence goes ahead of me, I shall not go. And I'm sure as, as Joshua sat by Moses, he must have learned a lot of things from Moses. And so in that same style, we can see him now living the life as a leader here, knowing that the presence of God must go ahead of us. I want to say here that obedience invoked the God, God's presence in Joshua. Because Joshua had obeyed God's instruction, God was with Joshua all the way like he had promised. Obedience invoked God's grace in Joshua. And this we know because in the battle, when he was fighting with the, with, 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 with the kings of Ai, Joshua lifting up the spear and Israelites winning the battle was driven by grace. Because he was actually instructed by God when the battle was going on, when he was fighting in Ai, lift up the spear. And when he lifted up the spear, what happened? They were defeated. They were smiting them. They were smiting them. And, and we are told, and you can find this in Joshua chapter 8, verse 18, uh, and also in verse number 26. Joshua's obedience enabled him to operate in supernatural authority. Because he was obedient to God, he was enabled to operate in supernatural 
authority. And this, again, we can see in Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about three things. And these three things are attributes that can help us nurture obedience in our life so that we can advance. I want to talk about three things that can help us in nurturing obedience so that we can advance. And these three things are as seen in the life of Joshua. He manifested these three things that I'm going to talk about. So in order for us to advance and conquer in 2024, in all spheres of our lives, we must be willing to demonstrate and live a life of obedience just like Joshua did. Joshua had a teachable spirit. Joshua had a teachable spirit. Joshua had a submissive spirit. Joshua had a submissive spirit. And Joshua had a reverent spirit. Not reverent as in pastor. Reverent spirit. So I'll talk about those three spirits that were manifest in the character of Joshua to bring out the obedience factor in Joshua. So I'll start with the first one, which is a teachable spirit, a teachable spirit. If we are going to advance in what we are doing, then we need to seek that God gives us the grace to operate with a teachable spirit, a teachable spirit. What is a teachable spirit? A teachable spirit refers to someone who is open and receptive to learn new things. When you are open and receptive to learn new things, you are referred to as somebody who has a teachable spirit. It is a quality or an attitude that allows individuals to embrace knowledge. If you have an attitude and you always want to embrace knowledge, you want to know what is new, you want to know how things are done. You are willing to be taught how things are done. Then we can say you have a teachable spirit. It appreciates different perspectives. A teachable spirit appreciates different perspectives. It is willing and accepts feedback or guidance from others. Ninajo unajipatia assessment sasa. You can assess yourself. Do I have a teachable spirit? or not, you can start assessing yourself there. So if you're going to advance and conquer, one of the things you're going to trust on God for this year is that God will give us a teachable spirit. God will give us a teachable spirit. It says, having a teachable spirit involves being humble. Having a teachable spirit involves being humble. Having a genuine curiosity to explore and expand one's knowledge. So it means that you are willing to adapt and to grow based on new information or experiences. The reason most of us don't get promotions is because we think we know. We think we know. We think we have arrived. Have you ever worked with people who when you start a statement, they finish for you? You start talking you are the one who knows what you are supposed to be saying. But they take your word and they finish for you. That is not a teachable spirit. And sometimes we struggle in life. We are, we are trying to advance, but you are not advancing because you've not given room within yourself for growth. So even when you are sitting in an interview, you are being assessed for an opportunity. They are looking for somebody who is the most thirsty for knowledge, somebody who has an attitude that wants to be filled, an attitude that is mellow, somebody who can be coined and twisted to make them fit in spaces or places where nobody else wants. But you are busy there demonstrating how you can do it, how you have done it, how you are the best. Sometimes in an interview, you can even say, I do not know, but I am willing to learn. That's a teachable spirit. Even in business, you find that you have an opportunity to be taught, to learn from others. 
You've just opened up a business at the corner. You are ignoring your environment completely. You do not even take time to see this person also had a barber shop. What are the lessons I can pick from them? You ignore, you assume who your hajui kunyoa, I'm a hajui salon, I am the one who knows. I'm going to teach them. And people don't come to your salon because your attitude can be read on your face. Do you know that? Your attitude can be read on your face. And because of that, people get to be repelled away. And then tunakuja kwa maombi hapa, you are always coming for prayer for God to bless your business. What you need is God to help you so that you can acquire a teachable spirit. A teachable spirit. That's what we need here. And so this is the spirit that Joshua had. And we can see this in Joshua's life. There are a number of scriptures, I'll just make a few examples here, that demonstrate that Joshua had a, a teachable spirit. Joshua's readiness to receive God's command and his willingness to follow God just demonstrates that he has a teachable spirit. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, we are told, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That is an assertion that Joshua is already willing to take instructions. When the Lord, when the Lord re-emphasizes, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. So the only thing you need to do, Joshua, is to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. So in other words, if Joshua is willing to take these words and to believe in what is being instructed, that he only needs to be strong and to be courageous, if he's willing to be taught in this space, then he is going with the Lord because the Lord is going to be with him wherever he goes. Joshua's commitment to diligently follow instruction given by Moses is another example that we can look at. And in Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 again, the same words are repeated and we see the one thing that is being called out here in Joshua being able to pick this instruction is being told, meditate on this law of the Lord. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. In other words, the secret, Joshua, for your success is in you putting yourself in focus in this word of God. If you're willing to be taught and to receive this word of God and meditate on it, do not turn from it to the right or to the left then you shall be able to see success wherever you go. That is what that scripture says. Joshua's willingness to listen and to relay God's instruction to the Israelites also show that he was open to being taught. The way he was willing to receive instructions, to receive commandments, and to relay the same to the children of Israel. It says this shows how he was open to being taught by God and his obedience to God's word. And we find this in Joshua chapter 3, Verse 9 to 11, Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. He's already been instructed. Now he's calling them so that he can pass the same word to them. He says, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hevites, the Perizzites, the Gigashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. See, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. He is replaying the instructions he was given, but now to the children of Israel. It demonstrates that he was teachable. Are we together? Tuko pamoja? Amana All right. So he demonstrates that he is having a teachable Spirit. Joshua's willingness to follow God's unconventional strategy. God had a very unconventional strategy in the invading of Jericho and the breaking of the walls of Jericho. It was not typical. But Joshua was willing to foolishly follow that unconventional strategy. And he says, this demonstrates his teachability. You can imagine you are being told, uh, we can even read it, uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 2 to 5. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho in your hands, along with its kings and its fighting men. 
march around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Think about it. Gio comes here and tells, tells you, you know what? We are going to bring down that house that is next to the church. But what we are going to do is we are going to march around it for six days. That's the first part of the instructions. Under normal circumstances, Pastor Gishuki, we na iko tia koyote. Is it normal for you to go and march around that building six days? Then you do day one, you come back, you pause. You do day two, you come back and you pause. You do day three, you come back and you pause. Six times. And then the seventh time, now you do it again. Seven times. And even after seven times, you are told, while you are doing it, keep. Keep quiet. Until I give you instructions. And when I give you instructions, follow those in. Isn't that ridiculous? You as a mature, educated, learned person. Because these people are not young. They're not, it was in Sunday school. You see the logic, wasn't, wasn't it absurd? But Joshua chose to be foolish to his knowledge so that he can be taught. He chose to agree to be taught, even in the foolishness of the strategies that were coming up. And so here we are told, March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. Sometimes you are told to do things that appear stupid by your leader, but because you have a teachable spirit, please follow in the stupidness and do what your leader wants you to do. Are we together? The reason we fail to get the promises God has bestowed for us is because we despise instructions from the leaders that God has placed in front of us. God never makes a mistake about leadership. Leaderships are ordained in heaven. So if you are here and you are struggling and you are saying your boss is bad, you ask yourself, am I obeying the instructions my boss is giving me? Am I following the instructions that my boss is giving me? And I tell you a secret. When you follow those instructions, you will gain favor with your bosses. You will gain favor with your bosses. Because they will know this is an attitude that is teachable. Even when you make mistakes, they will overlook your mistake because they already know your desire is not to shine, but your desire is to learn. And as you learn, you become better. And as you become better, the objectives of that organization are met. A few proverbs, I'll just call out two, but there are quite a number that speak about a teachable spirit. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 20. The word of God says, whoever gives thought to the word will discover good. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Proverbs 18, 15 says, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. I'll move to a submissive spirit. A submissive spirit. Now, a submissive spirit refers to a mindset or an attitude of willingly yielding or submitting to authority. The key word there is willingly. Willingly yielding or submitting to authority. That is a submissive spirit. Joshua had a submissive spirit. He says, the spirit or the attitude of willingly yielding or submitting to authority, willingly yielding or submitting to direction or to guidance. So if you willingly submit to authority, to direction or to guidance, it implies you have a submissive spirit. So again, you can assess yourself. It involves being humble, being respectful, and being obedient. How is this shown in the life 
of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. The word of God says, Then they answered Joshua. Now these are the Israelites, the, the scripture that the Jew read here earlier. They answered Joshua. And they answered Joshua demonstrating submission, I believe, because during the time when Moses was there, Joshua being with them, because if you notice, they said, we, and they made reference to the time of Moses. Joshua being with them, he must have shown them, because people were watching. By the way, when you become a leader, don't think that you've landed from heaven and come and become a leader. For those of you who ever want to be leaders here, the people you work with, the people you live with, the people you are with in ministry, those same people will judge you against the character that you demonstrate when you eventually become a leader. Because they know how you talk about your leaders. They know how you behave in the presence of your leaders. So never make a mistake. But let's read again this scripture and see here. It says, Joshua 1, 16 to 17, Then they answered Joshua saying, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. They're demonstrating submission to who? Joshua. But they're making reference to how they obeyed Moses, how they were submissive to who? To Moses. At the time they were submissive to Moses, were they or were they not with Joshua? They were with Joshua. So I'm correct to say that Joshua was submissive to Moses. Tuko pamoja? Yo ni philosophy class. Kuna, kuna philosophy kwa theology? There is, eh? All right. Pastor Joyce amesema ni ukweli, kwa hivyo ni ukweli. So he says, only may the, Lord God, may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Joshua. Now with, with Moses. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. The word of God says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, this is now Joshua coming out so strongly because of the stubbornness of the Israelites. Remember, this is in chapter 24. So they've won a lot of battles, but they are forgetting where they've come from and the victory that the Lord has given them. So he now reminds them and tells them, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living today. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Again, Joshua demonstrating his submissiveness to the Lord Jesus Christ, despite the circumstances. He demonstrates consistency in a submissive spirit. He says... In the Proverbs, maybe let me just call one or two Proverbs here as well to demonstrate this. In Proverbs 19, 21, the word of God says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So you just better be submissive. You can have many plans, but at the end of the day, it is the plan of the Lord that will stand. Proverbs 22 and verse 4 says, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And life. That is the reward of humility. Finally, a reverent spirit. A reverent spirit. What is a reverent spirit? A reverent spirit typically refers to an attitude or a demeanor that is characterized by deep respect honor, and regard for something or someone. So there must be deep respect. There must be honor and regard for something or someone. It is an attitude of humility and ew, or O. Oh. It is an attitude of humility and O, oh, often associated with spiritual devotion. Associated with spiritual devotion. It involves approaching a subject, in this case I would say God, with a sense of reverence. Acknowledging their importance or their sacredness. We say a reverent spirit can be demonstrated through actions, through words, the words that you speak, 
or through thoughts. And you can see this in the life of Joshua, how he demonstrated a reverent spirit. Through actions, your actions, the words that you speak, and the thoughts that you have. No wonder he was being told, meditate on the law. If you meditate on the law, most likely your thoughts will be on the law of the Lord. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, this man is courageous. I tell you, if it is obedience, Joshua was obeying to the latter. He was remembering, okay, there is a man here. I need to be strong and I need to be courageous. So he goes to this man with that attitude of, I am courageous, I am strong. He says, Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell. What did he do? He fell. What is that? An action. It's an action. Joshua did what? Fell. It's an action that demonstrates reverence. Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua did not argue. Joshua did not ask, oh, and who are you? And which order of hierarchy are you? Which rank are you? He simply obeyed. He simply obeyed. Joshua 9, 14. The Israelites sampled their provisions but did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live. And the leaders of the assembly ratified it by faith. This is in respect to the Gibeon Knights. If you remember the Gibeon Knights. Joshua again demonstrates in reverence to God that because these people have come and we already made an oath for them, it is in us, according to the law that I meditate in, day and, us, day and, and night, it is beha behave in us to then agree with the oath that we committed. Reverence right there. One or two proverbs that can cause us to think and reflect as we go on. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, or knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you despise wisdom and instruction, you are? I didn't say. Proverbs 9, 10, the word of God says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I want us to be upstanding. I want us to be upstanding. As I conclude this service or this sermon, the three things that we need to work on so that we can catalyze the obedience factor in us in order for us to advance in 2024, we need to seek that God will give us a teachable spirit, a teachable spirit, that God will give us a submissive spirit, and that God will give us a reverent spirit. I want you to take a moment in your life, in your business, in the things that you've been doing. Can you clearly see where you have been proud and not willing to learn? You have an opportunity. The grace is here and God can turn it around for you. You can go before God. He will hear you. He understands your situation. Are you desiring of God to have a submissive spirit? You can go before the Lord. Are you desiring of God to give you a reverent spirit? you can go before the Lord. Father, we thank you and we give you praise this afternoon. Thank you for your word, O oh God, that has been so clear to us. Lord, many times we've done things according to our own understanding, but you've instructed us in your word, Lord, not to lean on our own understanding, but to put our trust in you, O oh God, and you shall make our paths straight. On the matters of obedience, God, we have failed you many times. Father, I'm praying, let the grace of obedience be upon us. Let the grace, oh God, of having that teachable spirit, 
the spirit that wants to learn, the spirit that is humble enough to acknowledge that there is more that I can get from others. Let that spirit embody us, O oh God, the spirit of submissiveness and the spirit of reverence. Jehovah God, we pray, let that grace be sufficient in our lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.